I'm very happy to be here and it's always so exciting to see what's going on in the cell and gene therapy space. Just looking at the sheer numbers of clinical trials that are ongoing at the moment when Janet was introducing the numbers this morning, it's always so rewarding if you're working in this field. But of course, if we want to make cell and gene therapy a success, we also have to make sure that we have the right environment for actually developing and even more importantly producing the therapies. And for this, it's really important to have the, uh, a good ecosystem in place. And I'm very happy to introduce to you today such a case study, actually very local from the Basque country. And I'm very happy to have uh, Javier Garcia with me, um, who is the CEO of ViralGen, and also Gotsena Sarasdui. I'm sorry, no, I got your name right. <laughs> I was practicing. <laughs> and um, I would like to ask you two to introduce yourself very briefly. Maybe you would like to start, Gotsone. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And uh, I want to say that it's a pleasure for me to share this session with you today, especially because I became a Minister of Health of the Regional Government of the Basque Country at the middle of this pandemic situation that we have been living for the last two years. And this is maybe the first time that I've got the opportunity of sharing with so many people and so interesting people what's the future of the medicine. We have been focused so much on how to treat and how to affront the pandemic situation that we have to get, that we have to look ahead. That's something we have been working for the last years. That's something that we are really committed nowadays in the Basque country, which is a small, but a country with a big aspirations. And it has been a pleasure to meet Javier with us uh, so that we have been uh, able, even in this situation, to continue in our projects, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> And Javier, if you want to okay. also say a few words yeah. on your background. <laughs> Javier Garcia, it's a pleasure to, to be here. I, I, I wear many hats, but the, the one that I like the most is the, the Valadian CEO. I, I developed my career in the pharma industry. I worked for Eli Lilly for a number of years. I became an entrepreneur, have uh, my venture capital fund. And, but I would say of all the jobs I have done, and, and the one I keep and I have more proud is the, is the, the head of uh, Valadian allowed me to to really connect uh, medicine with manufacturing, with science, and be at the edge of that. So great to be here, and I'm happy to, to share the experience we have in the Basque Country. Wonderful to have you both. So um, maybe, Gotsune, you could elaborate a bit on the p uh, position of the Basque Country related to advanced therapies? Yes, of course. For us, as a country healthcare public service that we are, we are really committed to offer the best services for medical services for our population. Our population is an aging population that will require more and more health interventions in the years to come. That's why uh, we need, I think we am, I, I am convinced that we need to be prepared for all the technological and innovation that is ahead on us. In that uh, context, I would say that the role of the advanced therapies, including gene therapy in that mix, of course, is fundamental to tackle the new challenges that they are coming up. From my department, we are convinced that there are fundamental tools to be added to our portfolio of solutions as public se health service. No? And we are really willing to partner from the health services department with key stakeholders to make those available and integrate them into our offering. We just don't want to be waiting for those stakeholders to come to us with the solutions. We want to build together with them this uh, railway or motorway, you know? And all that is start with a firm committed for research and development that is already part of what we bring to our institution, you know? As we don't only provide services, but we also uh, want to be critical in the development of those solutions. You know? The pandemic, I think, that has touched uh, everybody, you know, that the lesson is the innovation is our path into the future, regardless of the challenges we could be facing from health needs. Uh, the committed from the past country government to research and innovation is not new. 
We have been working on that for many years ahead. And in particular, innovation in healthcare is a differential factor. As an example, I could tell you that our budget this year has increased 15% in innovation and research. No? Personal health and advanced therapies together with the smart industry and a cleaner energy are maybe the main three strategic pillars of our country strategy for the becoming years. I would summarize it like that. <clears throat> Wonderful. It's great to see such commitment from the government. And um, Javier, maybe you can explain a bit about the background of, of Viralgen and its role in the Basque country? Okay, yes. Uh, yes, Viralgen is, is a, I would say it's a nice story because it started, I think it's a story of partnership and a story of technology and partnership happening. It started in uh, almost five years ago and uh, it's a partnership between uh, Asbayo with uh, Jud Samulski and Sila Mihail who is here in the room and Columbus Venture Partners, uh, venture capital that I, I had, and started with the idea of bringing um, solutions in the AV market uh, in manufacturing, because at that time there was not much available and, 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 and the quality of the vector and the amount of vector available was not enough. And, and we decided to create a joint venture, and the joint venture was created in, in San Sebastian, and, and we will go into some detail around, around why, but the, the, the main reason was the, the same partnership spirit that we brought, uh, those who were coming together, uh, was shared with the, with the Basque country government. And also one of the things that was very important is we could attract uh, talent. So we started very small. Uh, I remember uh, back in beginning, uh, September 2017, we were five people in a lab in San Sebastian. We are right now almost 350 people. and We have uh, four production runs already in uh, certified and three more up to 2,000 liters that will be certified during the year. So uh, it, it's been a phenomenal story. You, you tell me five years ago that we were going to go so far, I would say it would be impossible. But I think the, the, the beauty of the story is the, is the ability to combine technology, vision, and a commitment on, on those things. And I think that's the, that's the, that's the background of, uh, of us that I think would be very, very important. At this point, we are a, a company who is growing and growing a lot, but I think the foundation, the fundamentals of the company were right from the very beginning. That idea of the technology, we use Proten, one of the best sell lines in the world. Uh, we use the technical knowledge from Naspayo. We recruited great people. We partnered with the government. We really did something that uh, was very unique in a short period of time. But um, the fundamental part is people, the fundamental part is talent that we're able to, to bring together. Yeah, I'm quite impressive. And so your, your um, partners and clients, can you tell us a bit about where they are located? Hmm. So how many are in Europe, US, rest of the world? <laughs> well, we are, we are serving customers around the world. One, one of our main customers is, is, uh, is, is Asbio with a portfolio, but it's not our only customer. We serve many customers in the US, in Europe. Uh, some in Spain, not, not very many, but uh, mainly are uh, US and European, European companies who are starting, as you mentioned before, there is a lot of clinical trials, there is a lot of uh, uh, process in terms of moving these medicines to, to patients, and manufacturing is absolutely a fundamental part of these advanced therapies, so that's where we play a role, and we play a role with the knowledge that we have, with the platform that we, we have also that allow us to, to cut across a bunch of uh, development and, and really apply the same process to, to, to different developments and, and that's a big advantage to us. So that's why we are serving many customers in the world. We do only one thing very good, that's AEBs. We don't do other things, but we do AEBs. Mm -hmm. And are you considering expanding your technologies that you're applying and uh, other plans for your future? <laughs> We are a constant in, in constant innovation with uh, our partners in, in Asbayo. That uh, we are exploring uh, new new opportunities, new evolutions of the cell line. We are exploring new new ways of improving the process. We are exploring new ways of improving quality. So that's constant, and, and we are partnering with companies, and we are liking to to partner with companies to to, to achieve those. Uh, the technology is great, but if you don't evolve, the technology become obsolete, and, and uh, the nature of our business is innovation and knowledge, and, and we have to continue investing in that, and we are doing that. Mm -hmm. And do you, like, I obviously do think the technology is going to move towards inducible stable cell lines for AV production? 
We hope so. We hope. We, we share that. Uh, again, we, I don't think we are ready for that, but hopefully we'll be ready soon. And this is something that we are exploring and we'd like to continue exploring. We think that uh, uh, it, it would be better for uh, customers, for patients, for the cycle time, for cost. So we, we think that's, that's the future and constant evolution, and that would be one of the areas of, of focus. Great. <clears throat> yeah, maybe you can both share with us um, the unique features of the of the ecosystem you're you're building in the Basque Country. <laughs> well, we may say maybe that the first unique uh, element in the ecosystem is the variety of the technologies and industrial settings that we've got over there: AAB, antivirus, Catian, maybe plasmid manufacturing uh, are part of our industrial offering. Alone that we have a number of interventions in the healthcare system that allow us also to be part of clinical and uh, trials and research activities uh, for those technologies. We have uh, four uh, research institutes in the health service, in the public health service, and I think that's another so that we are really trying to have our own path over that. No? I like to say always that we are a small country, uh, but large in ambition, no? But we, uh, and we want to be integrated in our health care effort. And we are ready to exploit uh, the synergies between a world-class industrial environment, which is very traditional in the Basque country, by the way, and a very integrated and modern healthcare system. Yeah, when, when we decided to to invest in, in Balgen, and as I said, we created a joint venture. The first question is, where, where was, what was the location that we were going to choose? And we chose the Basque Country. We chose San Sebastian for one reason, is uh, the access to talent. That was the main differential factor. We could access to talent, and I will go into some more detail. We also had some infrastructure there that allow us to, to really uh, put our facility in a, in a record time. And, uh, third thing is we have the ability to grow other businesses around uh, and create businesses that are ancillary that uh, could be also good support for what we are doing. In terms of the talent, uh, I would say that um, it's, uh, we were able to attract a lot of people from France into the, into the company and there was a lot of French talent that uh, were able to come to us in San Sebastian. Uh, it has the unique position that is just 15 kilometers away from the border so people can live in France and work in Spain. And, and, and that was very, very useful. And, and that for us was a very important factor to begin. However, uh, we couldn't grow only attracting people from France, and we had to create our own feeding pool of people and talent. Uh, and we did that, and, and the Basque Country offered us the opportunity to create uh, a special training, a professional training, that uh, was customized to our needs. And we have right now a promotion of 30, 30 kids every year that stay two years with us and then uh, one year in the school, two years with us, and this, then they join us uh, in the company. Those opportunities that we were able to put in place in less than three months are very unique, and also uh, great opportunities to grow the people, to grow the talent. No ecosystem in the world is going to be able to be maintained without the right people, and I think in the Basque country we found that ability to bring people and to bring the commitment from, from the government on that. Yes, that scans, as I told you, that we have a lot of industrial experience in our country and maybe one of the best things of our, of our vocational uh, training system is that we can give each of the manufacturing, if of the companies, the kind of answer they need, the kind of professionals they, they need for the future, not only for the present, because we are not looking for those professionals to have a chance to work right now, but also what are we going to improve on as a country, which is the government's uh, goals, which are the gov government economical goals, which are, what are the companies thinking about the next 10, 20, 15 years, and we can prepare that, those many people that they may need for those solutions. That's something that uh, Javier has experienced, but different companies also working in our country, in the Basque country, can tell you about that. And I think that's very important because uh, we are preparing together since the very beginning the needs of the future. Great. 
Yeah, I think it's really Im impressive what you're achieving here. <laughs> and, and once the advanced therapies have arrived, Kozone, how do you see the role of the health system then? <laughs> okay, I, can, I think that we have to prepare the healthcare system for those therapy to come. Uh, as I told you previously, we want to do it in a very active way. There is no doubt that the best treasure we have got are, it's our professionals. And that's why we also need to help our healthcare professionals to be informed and trained on how to better use those therapies. We also need, I think, very active to initiate a discussion about new financial models because that will be another of the goals of this or new authorities, especially when you are talking from a public health service where you try to give everybody their chance, everybody the same chances, and we know that in the new therapies all financial items will be really key. You know? I think that nowadays we in the Basque country we have the opportunity of learning as we go in the way and many of these therapies, initial focus are on rare diseases also, but applications are advancing in other diseases like is cancer, diabetes, pain, or neurodegenerative uh, diseases. We can be early adopters, or we can be partners on several of these diseases and learn together with our sponsors. Fantastic. <laughs> and so, obviously, the question, what's next in the ecosystem? <laughs> Well, the, the, for, for us, the, 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 the ecosystem is, um, is growing, it's growing quite a lot uh, since the beginning. We, are, we just put in place uh, six months ago the commercial manufacturing facility, and we are just bringing up to speed the first uh, three rooms, so one third of the capacity. And our goal is to, to help customers to move into the, um, from phase two proof of concept into phase three and commercial. And, and that's, the, that's the next step in the, in, the, in the ecosystem that we are getting. We are also uh, having um, plasmid production already in campus that uh, is going to be uh, extremely fundamental for the, for the development of, the, of these therapies. And we have also the services around that uh, are, are growing there. So for us, it's uh, extremely important to, to, to grow those elements in a way that uh, companies are also helping each other and institutions, government institutions are also helping. So we are using, for instance, um, uh, some institutes for doing some quality control activities that uh, we are teaching them how to do those things. We are helping them to enable some, some techniques and some technologies. So that's part of the, of the ecosystem. At the end of the day, um, we, we think we have the, a great opportunity right now in serving customers in, in three areas that are, we, we think are fundamental. One is the, the quality of the product and the quality of the product is going to be paramount and it's going to be more paramount as we see the regulators adding more requirements and putting more, more um, uh, requirements to the, to the product and, and, and we are here to, to, to really partner with our customers. The second one is uh, accessibility, so um, we need to provide capacity and ability for customers to, to play from the small preps to the large preps so um, the, the solutions are accessible and the last one is going to be affordability. Is uh, those cost of goods need to be also appropriate for the, for the market and, and we are working on that too, given the characteristics of our cell line, the platform that we have, we believe we are in a good position for that. So any ecosystem we are going to put in place around this is going to help to support those three elements. Uh, and, and we are doing work uh, with the uh, area with the health system to start preparing some clinical trials. We are doing work with the uh, uh, different organizations to, 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 to have them to, to conduct the trials, to support them in that process. And we are teaching also some people around what does it mean uh, to become um, uh, ready for prime time in manufacturing, in ready to, to move from a proof of concept into, into a phase three. And that's, that's part of what we are doing too. Maybe in terms of the healthcare system, what we have to do nowadays is to get ready to adopt these technologies and also see how to include them, to integrate them in our offering. No? Uh, we do continuous uh, technical evaluation of those technologies and we establish the framework on how 
they have to be used, no? I would say. We have now to decide also in which we are going to be earlier adopters or how we are going to do that because it's not easy. They are many, as we told you, we are small, so we are not so many. I think that can be a chance, but also we have to be realistic, no? We have to choose, no? It's, all, it's true, as I told you, that we have a really commitment with uh, our research institutes in that way of trying to implement them in our offerings and try to go deciding. Uh, there is another thing also that these technologies are in a way forcing us to transform ourselves and that needs to have a context. It can be yes because we've got the therapies. No? We never have to forget that the patient is the center of whatever we do and that citizens are expecting from us that they will have the best healthcare system to serve the medical needs, not to serve the system itself, but the patient's needs, no? So we have to address today's, today's needs, maybe thinking about tomorrow's expectations, no? While also preserving viability. As we, you, I mentioned previously, no? The viability not only of the therapies, but the viability of the whole of the healthcare system, no? It's not an easy task, but I think that's what we have to face and that's what uh, has to be the central need of all our decisions. That's the future. Absolutely, yeah. I think you're setting a great example for other countries, other regions, and what would you say uh, can these other regions learn from what you've been doing so successfully? <laughs> Well, I think uh, when we started this journey, and I still remember the, the first meeting we had in, in San Sebastian uh, with, the, with the government, and we explained the vision, and uh, it, in the slide we use for that vision is the same slide we are using five years ago, five years after that. So, sharing our vision and agreeing on which role each of you have for the vision, because if the vision is not bought by uh, both parties, there is no partnership possible. So in our case, we, we had the vision to, to become one of the best providers in the world of AV technology, uh, and the Basque country has the vision of, re of becoming a hub of innovation around biotechnology, so we were able to, to, ma to, to, to match that. And the vision has only one component at the time, but uh, many other aspirations. We have been able to deliver each of them as we go. So first one is vision. You have to have a vision that is, is shared and, and joined. The second one, that is very important is you have to have uh, an implementation plan. Uh, the implementation plan has to be very clear. You need to understand what a company can do, what a government can do. You have to understand the limitations that a company has, the limitations that a government have, and marry those in a way that uh, each one delivers the best. And the last uh, component of the success is going to be the trust and communication. And as I said before, this is, Belgium started as a story of partnership and a continuous story of partnership with the, with the government and we have that conversation as, as we move and uh, again, again it's easy for me to say but Gautone uh, can comment on that. We have our bumps up and downs and everything but uh, we always come back to the vision, we always come back to the implementation plan and we always come back to the trust, the trust around, yeah, we, we, we know that uh, we can rely on each other and our partners and the government and at the end of the day, this, this for me are the, the, the three elements of success. Obviously, people is the other component. So if you want to build something like this, or you want to build something that is transformational, intellectual capital is fundamental. So that's the other component. So, to know what's on it. Yes, I agree absolutely. With, uh, Javier, I could say that one of the best uh, things of uh, the project that we are serving is that we are started together from the very beginning. And that's something that makes a point. And also that knowing that we have different interests because they are a company, we are a public health service, but we've got something in common, which are the patients, which is a health for welfare for the, for the future, no? And I think that only can be beneficial for both parts, no? I think it's a win-win uh, relation. 
I, I absolutely agree also with Javier that it's very important to be honest and to say to each other whatever you want to clearly so that we will be able to share some things, to change some other things and of course to work together a common uh, project. I think that that's the main point maybe from the project that we are serving now, Javier. Now we are feeling Javier as a partner of the public health service care service of the Basque Country and I hope that uh, Javier feels the same way our collaboration with them as a company because also and as a member of a government I don't have to uh, to <coughs> To, for, to, to forget to mention that also health is care of persons but also is economy and it, they are part of our economy. If our economy is successful, our country will be able to implement more uh, future uh, therapies and solutions for the most of our citizens. So we are about to win. There is no other reason. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. And I think we have time for one or two questions from the audience. <laughs> There's one here in the front. Do you say? Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Hola, Egunon, Gotsone, Buenos Dias, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Nel Rougier reporting for Science Advisory Board. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to know, maybe you've said it at the beginning of your presentation, how much money does the Basque country invest in healthcare technology? Well, uh, the decision of uh, taking an amount of money for health research and development has been growing for the last uh, at least three, five years, yeah, uh, if I am not wrong. I would tell you that uh, maybe we have uh, uh, doubled our investments in the last two years. It has been a 15% in our budget, actually. You have to know that the budget of the Department of Health in the Basque Country is the biggest one of the government. Yeah. We take two third parts of all the budget. And from that, uh, it's about uh, 4,600 million that we have in the whole, 3,600 uh, uh, 3, uh, are for the healthcare system itself and from the rest of it is for development, it's also for planning, it's also for private development and so on. So you can take care that 15% uh, of all that is uh, directed to research and development. And do we know in euros how much that is? <laughs> in euros, do you, I remember, do you remember Marianne maybe which is the total amount of them. I don't remember it, but uh, you have to realize that we are a regional government. We are not a national government. It means that we really are committed on that, no? Because we are talking about a thousand of millions in a budget, which is a regional government budget. Yeah. So I think that maybe the percentage of uh, is more clear than the amount itself. Okay. Okay. Esqueri Casco. Welcome. She is learning Basque. <laughs> so, thanks again. Welcome. <laughs>